Today we're going to look at a somewhat technical and semi-well-known result that's used in problem-solving contests. And it's called the lifting the exponent lemma. So let's see what it says. So let's suppose that x and y are integers, n is a natural number, and p is a prime, and p does not divide x times y. But observe, that means that p doesn't divide x, and p doesn't divide y. Then, well, there are really kind of five parts of this. Three in the case that p is odd, and two in the case when p is even. So if p is odd, let's look at these three parts, and then we'll prove the odd parts before looking at the even parts. Okay, so if p divides x minus y, then that means that eta of p of xn minus y to the n is equal to eta of p of x minus y plus eta of p of n. And you might say, well, what is eta of p or eta sub p of something? Well, let's recall that right here. So eta sub p of capital N is equal to k if and only if p to the k divides into capital N and p to the k plus 1 does not divide into capital N. So put a little bit more loosely, that's uh, eta sub p of a number is the largest power of that prime that divides into the number. So in this case, well, it's k because p to the k divides into the number, but p to the k plus 1 does not. Okay, and then, well, now that we've recalled that function, let's look at these other two cases. So in the case that p divides x plus y, you get something very, very similar. Notice it's exactly the same, just with those minuses replaced with pluses. But that only holds if n is odd. Now if n is even and you replace the pluses with minuses, then you get eta p of x to the n plus y to the n is zero. Okay, so let's look at this first case first, which I've transposed up here. So we're going to prove this by induction on the value of eta p of n. So in other words, the value of or the number of times that p divides into n. Okay, so let's maybe do our base case first, as that's always the first case of an induction proof. So the base case here would be eta sub p of n equals zero but that means that p does not divide n. Okay, well, let's also notice that since p divides x minus y, that means that x is congruent to y modulo p. That's really the definition of congruence mod p. And now let's note the following calculation, which essentially finishes it all off. And we have x to the n minus y to the n factors is x minus y times x to the n minus 1 plus x to the n minus 2 times y plus all the way down to x times y to the n minus 2 plus y to the n minus 1. That's a standard factorization of x to the n minus y to the n. Okay. But now let's look at this. So this quantity right here can easily be reduced mod p using this congruence that we have up here. We can replace all of the y's with x's. But replacing all of the y's with x's turns all of these into x to the n minus 1, kind of pretty clearly. So we've got all of those are x to the n minus 1. But how many of them do we have? Well, we have exactly n of them. So here we have n times x to the n minus 1 modulo p. So like I said, we're reducing mod p. But now let's observe that since p does not divide n, n is not congruent to 0 mod p. And well, x is also not congruent to 0 mod p because of this condition right here. So that means that n times x to the n minus 1 is also not congruent to 0 modulo p. But that means this factorization of x to the n minus y to the n as it factors 
into primes, all of the factors of p will coalesce into this x minus y term. In other words, we have eta sub p of x to the n minus y to the n is equal to eta sub p of x minus y plus zero. But that zero is exactly eta sub p of n. So that shows us that in our base case, this formula holds. Okay, so now let's move on to the induction step. Now that we've done the base case, we're ready to do the induction step, which starts with the induction hypothesis. So let's suppose the statement holds for odd m with eta sub p of m equals k. And then what we want to do from there is consider n, which is equal to m times p. But that means that eta sub p of n is equal to k plus 1. And now let's look at x to the n minus y to the n, which is pretty clearly equal to x to the m p minus y to the m p. But then we can think about that as x to the m raised to the p minus y to the m raised to the p. And now let's perform a pretty similar uh, simplification on that or factorization on that. So that's going to factor to x to the m minus y to the m times, well, it's going to be something kind of weird, x to the m raised to the p minus 1 plus x to the m raised to the p minus 2 times y to the m plus all the way down to y to the m raised to the p minus 1. Okay, cool. But now we're going to use the same kind of thing before, that x is congruent to y modulo p. And we're going to do that reduction on this object. So let's see, that's going to give us p terms that are all like x to the m times p minus 1. Well, really, it's x to the m to the p minus 1, but you can combine those. And that's congruent modulo p. Okay, great. So notice that this right here does not have any factors of p in it. So no factors of p. And that's by, again, our assumption right here. So that means that this p out front is the only factor of p inside of this big sum. But those two things together will tell us what? Well, those two things tell us that if you apply the eta p uh, function on that big sum, you simply get the number 1. Okay, great. But then we can also apply the eta p function on this term right here and use uh, the induction hypothesis. So if we apply the eta p function on that using the induction hypothesis, we know that we'll get what? So we'll get eta sub p of x minus y plus eta sub p of m. Okay. So now putting this all together, what do we have? We have eta sub p of x to the n minus y to the n is equal to eta sub p of x minus y plus eta sub p of m plus 1. Again, putting all those parts together. But now look, eta sub p of m is k, eta sub p of n is k plus 1. So that means if you add these two things together, you get eta sub p of n. But that means that in the case that eta sub p of n equals k plus 1, the result holds. But that's the end of this induction step, finishing the proof of this statement. Now let's move on to this next one. So now we're ready to take care of well, really these second two. We can do that all at once. It doesn't take as much work. So let's look at this first one, which is exactly what we have right here, except the plus is exchanged for a minus, and it holds in the case when n is odd. And, well, I can do this very, very quickly. So let's observe that eta sub p of x to the n plus y to the n is exactly the same thing as eta sub p of x to the n minus negative y to the n. 
but now we can apply part one to this. And that's gonna give us eta sub p of x minus minus y, in other words, x plus y, plus eta sub p of n, as needed. Okay, so now let's look at this next bit. So in this case, if n is even, then eta sub p of x n or x to the n plus y to the n should be equal to zero. And we're in fact gonna do this by way of contradiction. So let's see how that might go. And just to be uh, clear here, let's uh, see where the proof starts. Okay, so by way of contradiction, let's suppose that eta sub p of x to the n plus y to the n is not zero, which means it is bigger than zero. But notice that that is equivalent, or not, e but notice that that is equivalent, that inequality is equivalent to saying that x to the n plus y to the n is congruent to zero modulo p, which is the same thing as saying that x to the n is congruent to minus y to the n mod p, just moving some things around here. But now let's also note that p divides x plus y, which means that x is congruent to minus y mod p, using a fairly similar argument. Actually, we did exactly that before. x is congruent to negative y mod p, using, you know, we used that argument already. But next up, what I wanna do is raise both sides of this to the nth power. That's gonna leave us with x to the n on the left, but since n is even, that's gonna leave us with y to the n on the right. And so observe what we have is x to the n is congruent to minus y to the n and y to the n. But then we can add those two congruences, leaving us with 2x to the n congruent to 0 mod p. But that tells us that p either divides 2 or uh, p divides x. But we know that p is an odd prime, so it can't divide 2. And, well, we assumed via this right here that p did not divide x. Okay, so now we've taken care of all of these cases when p is an odd prime. Now let's look at the case when p is really the only even prime. In other words, p is equal to 2. Now we're ready to look at the even cases. And we're going to start with this second even case because it'll be used for the first even case. So perhaps those should have been written in opposite orders. And it goes like this. So if 2 divides x minus y and n is odd, then eta sub 2 of x to the n minus y to the n is eta sub 2 of x minus y. Now let's collect a couple of facts here. So let's observe that 2 does not divide x times y, but notice that that means that 2 or that x and y are both odd. So they're both congruent to 1 mod 2. But observe, that means that x to the n and y to the n are both congruent to 1 modulo 2 as well. Now, we're going to use that. And I guess maybe we shouldn't have an n here. We should have maybe a k here because it's really all powers of x and y that are odd. They're congruent to 1 mod 2. Okay, so now let's look at the following factorization. So we've got x to the n minus y to the n. We'll factor as x minus y times x to the n minus 1 plus x to the n minus 2 times y all the way down to y to the n minus 1 using that same factorization that we did before. And now let's reduce all of this modulo 2. And, well, use this fact up here, that all of these are congruent to 1. But how many of them do we have? We have exactly n of them. So that makes this sum congruent to n modulo 2. But n is odd, so that's congruent to 1 mod 2. So that means if you were to factor out all possible powers of 2 from x to the n minus y to the n, they would all condense in this x minus y. In other words, eta sub 2 of xn minus y to the n is exactly equal to eta sub 2 of x minus y as needed. Now let's move on to the other case when n is even. 
Okay, so the case when n is even goes like this. We have eta sub two of x to the n minus y to the n is eta sub two of x minus y plus eta sub two of x plus y plus eta sub two of n minus one. Okay, cool. Now we're gonna do induction on eta sub two of n and we're gonna start with the case when eta sub two of n is one. But observe that that's equivalent to saying that n is equal to two times m, where m is an odd number. But now let's look at this factorization. We have x to the n minus y to the n, which is of course equal to x to the two m minus y to the two m, which can be factored as a difference of squares, x to the m minus y to the m and x to the m plus y to the m. But now let's observe that this factorization allows us to write eta sub two of x to the n minus y to the n as eta sub two of x to the m minus y to the m plus eta sub two of x to the m plus y to the m. But now check it out, we can apply this second case to both of these terms. Just thinking about this second term as x to the m minus minus y to the m. Again, because m is odd. So that means this is gonna be eta sub two of x minus y, and this next one is gonna be eta sub two of x plus y. But then we're missing that eta sub two of n minus one. But notice eta sub two of n is one, so that difference is zero. So we might as well include it as it is zero. But now it looks like exactly the formula that we're going for in our base case. Okay, so now let's move on to the induction step. So now we're moving on to the induction step, starting with the induction hypothesis. So let's suppose the statement for even m with eta sub two of m equals k, and let's consider um, n equals two times m. But notice that that means eta sub two of n equals k plus one. And now, well, we're gonna essentially do the same sort of factorization. So we've got eta sub two of x to the n minus y to the n equals eta sub two of x to the really two m minus y to the two m. But let's go ahead and factor it. So we have m minus y to the m plus eta sub two of x to the m plus y to the m. So something like that. And now, well, let's observe that we can apply the induction hypothesis to this first bit. So that's gonna give us eta m of x minus y plus eta two, I should say, of x plus y plus eta two of m minus one. And now we just have to discern what's going on with this second term. But in fact, that's not quite as difficult as it might seem. So let's notice that one is that x and y are both odd. Let's also observe that m is even. We know that because of our setup right here. So since m is even and x and y are odd, then that means that this is the sum of two odd perfect squares. But the sum of two odd perfect squares is always congruent to two mod four. That's because each of them is congruent to one mod four. So here we've got this is congruent to two modulo four. But if it's congruent to two mod four, the biggest power of two that can divide into it is two. So there, we might as well just put a plus one right there. But now we're essentially done because we can take this eta sub two uh, of m and this plus one and combine them together to give us an eta sub two of n. And then after inserting that for that sum, we'll have exactly the formula that we want um, for our next case after assuming our induction hypothesis. And that's a good place to stop.